saying hello to our good friend uh, Matt Brown at uh, in Chapel Hill joining us today. And, and um, Coach, great to have you on. Uh, uh, I'm sure if you were commentating on uh, your, your season last year, you might have uh, uh, more diplomatic words than you used recently. But it's good afternoon, and it's great to see you again. Thanks, Paul. Great to see you. And may I say that our basketball coach, Hubert Davis, and I are getting along wonderfully. <laughs> I, I, do, I don't so want to. We can dr- start with. <laughs> we, we, we can start with that to get that out of the way. If you were going to bring it up or question it at all, Hubert was at practice the other day, and and we're we're great friends and and, and really enjoy each other. No, Paul, it's interesting. We we exceeded expectations the first year. They'd won five games in two years before we got here. Won two the year before we got here. We won seven, could have won nine, but everybody was excited about seven. We won a bowl game. Then the second year, we go to the Orange Bowl for the first time in school history, have A&M tied with five minutes left to go in the game and don't finish and, and blow it. And then last year, we lost a lot of great players. We lost 4,200 yards of offense. But as you and I have always been asked to do right after the national championship game, people start saying, rate the teams for next year. Well, who knows? Chemistry, injuries, but we had Sam Howell. And and we were on a good trajectory, uh, but we didn't handle it well. At Texas, we got so we understood how to handle expectations. We weren't there as a program yet. And, and I couldn't get that done. I, I was disappointed in me. And then going back and studying the program, we've lost on the road. And, and we've lost 14 games by seven points or less. Most of those on the road. We've lost three overtime games. That's coaching. That's what we're asking our coaches to do. We, we're a, a very talented team. We're an inexperienced team because our last two years have been our best recruiting years. But you're supposed to win coach, close games by coaching. And that's confidence. And, and, and that's getting people in the right position. So that's what we've got to do. A lot of the younger coaches can't say that because they're worried about getting fired, and it's, it's fact. And I can say it because I've, uh, I believe it, and it's there, and, and we need to do a better job. You, you know how difficult it is to win a national championship. Uh, you won one with Gene Chizik as your defensive coordinator, and uh, you, you now have him back on, on your staff. How did you lure him out of the bright lights of television in the same place I'm currently working uh, to become uh, one of your top assistants? Well... I was stupid to leave that job. And then I told Gene, I was so dumb, I need to get you to be as dumb as I was. And he joined <laughs> me too. So I, that, that worries me about his intelligence level, Paul. He, he said we work four months a year and they paid us for 12. How good is that, man? You, now you have to work all 12. So it, it was different for Gene and I. Uh, I tried to hire him three years ago when I came, but he was still watching his son in, in high school. And his his son is a safety at Furman. And and playing well, and and Gene knew with TV he couldn't watch him play Saturdays, so this was just a great opportunity for me to get him to come back, and he has made such a difference in my life because he's been in my chair. He's won a national championship as a head coach. He's won a national championship as an assistant coach with me, so we know how to do this together, and and uh, he walks into the room with credibility. And he won 11 games when he was here as a defensive coordinator with Coach Fedora before. So he's familiar with this place. The place loves him. Uh, the, the kids saw him on TV like they saw me. So he walks in the room immediately and gets their attention. He's, he's doing a tremendous job. Talking to Coach Mac Brown. Coach, listen, we've had previous conversations about this next subject. Uh, and you uh, are among the most honest about it because you, you, you're in a position where you can speak your mind, and you've already done that on television, and you did it when you were in Texas. Uh, so where, where are we now as year two of, of NIL is underway? The transfer portal is under attack by nearly everyone. College football is, has been turned upside down. Paul, there, there have been more changes probably in the last three years than that in my 47 or 49, whatever it's been. This will be the 34th year as a head coach. And we can either gripe about it or we can fix it. And we need to fix it. College football is is a wonderful thing and has been for years, and it's still very popular. We've got to take care of the players, and we've got to take care of the fans, because without fans, we have no game. And and those are the two things we've got to look at. So uh, I, I, I understand NIL. I like it. There's a lot of great things about it. Um, the first thing I thought about was an artist on your campus can sell his art. 
A musician can go play at a concert or a bar and make money, so why shouldn't student athletes be able to do the same? The thing we didn't do, we threw it in place without guidelines. The NFL has a lot more guidelines than we do, and what we've done now through recruiting with NIL is, is we've made it where it's unequal, uh, and those that are paying more money through the collectives are getting better players. Now, the seven or eight that have been the best in the, the country have been the best in the country the last few years anyway. But we, we need to make it where it's more fair on signing day. The second part of that is you add the transfer portal and the NIL together, Paul, and we, we talk about tampering. There is some tampering. And, and there's people that are buying kids off campus to go to other places. I really don't like that. Some people say, well, the kid has to be interested in leaving. Well, if you... If he's not making any money and you offer him 500000 he's going to leave, most likely. And, and I understand that. We had two that um, were, were approached on our team this spring, and they both decided to stay. But, but we need to get rid of tampering. That, that's, and, and I don't know how you do it. We've got a lot of smart people out there that have got to make some hard decisions. And then we've got to get it so we, we just don't allow kids to get up one day and quit because they're having a bad day. Because it's not a good message for kids. They're not learning to fight through things. All of us have had to fight through things in our life. And now a kid gets up. Well, I had one come in. He said, it's 6.30 meeting. And he said, Coach, I'm going to quit. And I said, why? And he said, I'm second team. I'm not playing very much. I don't feel really good today, and I don't want to practice. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go visit some other places. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.